and a happy New Year's Eve to everybody. It's me, good old Jones, with some questions and answers for Patreon for December. First one, tell us about your engagement story. For those of you who don't know, Stacy and I are now happily engaged. It happened on the 22nd. We had dinner, and then I had convinced her that I had a new holiday song that I liked, that I wanted to play her, because my prior song that I love, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, is a bit of a sad song. And so we had dinner around Columbia University, and then we went to one of her favorite locations. There are a grove of trees that line up against the, the street area, Columbia, the main pathway, and they're dotted with these really beautiful, precise lights. And we walked down them, just kind of basked in the glow of the quiet night air, and sat down to the bench, and I played her the song. A song that I wrote, actually, for the proposal. Oh, why, why don't we build a road? And while I did that, I got down on my knees, and I presented her with a ruby gold-plated ring shaped like a pug, custom designed by a designer in London. Since we both plan on getting a little baby pug around the first quarter of 2017. And it was just so wonderful. It was a very special moment and I'm glad that she's in my life and I'm glad that we get to embark on a bunch of epic long adventures together. Is there a time you miss cues because you were too busy thinking about other things? I mean, all the time. <laughs> I hyperfixate on stuff sometimes to the point where I forget common sense. One time I was so fixated on things I was worried about that I walked into an appointment and I had two different types of shoes on my feet. They were both sneakers, they were both in the same company, but they were wildly different colors and designs. What do you really like about Christmas? I love that the holidays in general bring people together all across the globe, strangers feeling kinder to each other, friends who don't see each other very often, whether it's separated by miles or just life, being able to touch down and be present with one another in ways that are clear and open and desirable to remind people that you love them and care about them, and you do so with meals and gifts and playing games with them. What's the one word that describes what you want the most in 2017? Gratitude. I'm making a daily list right now of things that I'm grateful for, and I find that it helps soften my, uh, my nerves. And I plan to expand on that more in the future. I know that I already plan a lot. I know that I hustle. I know that I work on projects. But I think it's more important above all those things to be grateful for whatever interaction comes about. Because there's times when, you know, especially when you're a creative person, where you, you get down on yourself because you don't see the gains or you, you build up this really high yardstick of what a prosperous goal looks like. And... If it doesn't hit there, you're down on yourself. But I think the cultivation and the ministry of gratitude can really help develop peace, help keep the energy alive so you can continue to, to strive for and work hard at your career, at the, you know, the furthering of yourself. Are you an observer of the world? Absolutely. But not one of those distant, bird's eye view, lofty sort of ways. New York City has both. New York City is a city where you can sit up in a penthouse and you can stare out into a window and look down upon the little, you know, checkerboard grid of the city and see all the small, tiny, buzzing lives. There's a friend of mine, a writer, who we had a rehearsal the other day and it was in Trump Tower on Columbus Circle on the 41st floor. 
And he looked out and he, he commented to me that how if he was living here as a writer, he would always be able to get work done because if he ever had writer's block, he could just peer out into these, you know, 10 foot by 15 foot windows and gaze upon the city for inspiration. And I thought, that's silly. That to me is antiseptic. That to me doesn't really give you anything. If you want nature, if you want to be able to see human nature, you've got to mix it up and down. You've got to get into the gritty. I love subways. I love subways because they're exactly that. Every single time you have the choice of shutting off your senses as much as possible, putting in your earphones, reading a book, get thinking into the cocoon of your mind, or you can tap in ever so softly with the lives of those around you. Just last night, there was this guy who came in around, I want to say, 125th Street. And he was half muttering to himself, most likely drunk, about how, why couldn't he make more money? He deserved more than making $8 an hour. And for almost 200 blocks, he's just kept banging his feet down on the subway car floor as he sat there. And about every seven minutes, but not exactly, he clapped his hands rhythmically and a bit too loudly. It was fascinating. I mean, I just kept thinking, what is going on? Where does this guy work? What does he want? Why isn't he getting what he wants? And this city, if you listen to it, will give you so much. Questions for you. What one new thing in 2016 are you proud to have accomplished? And my second question. What's your favorite color? And what moment did you know it was your favorite color and why? Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this artistic process, this journey, this, this nonsense for 2016. I'm going to make a pledge drive this January to get more engagement and more members for a big reason. You know, weddings are not cheap. And I've put in savings about a good portion of my paycheck every month. But even with that, I realized that a little is just a little. And so I will be turning to my artistic work, my dividends, my interactions with you to see what we can do to add towards that large, looming, wonderful number. I love you, everybody. Happy holidays. Have a blessed, wonderful new year.